Hey everyone, welcome back. It's Marcus here. I have another Automa done and ready to go for your enjoyment. This time it is Chocolate Factory. Once again, I know there is a solo in the box and that's great if you want to play um, the way it's it's meant to be played solo out of the box, uh, but it just didn't do it for me, so I've created this Automa to replicate a multiplayer game. So to set up, you're going to set up like you would in a normal two-player game. You're going to take your factory board. You're going to take a small, medium, and large corner store. You're going to set up the different departments on either A or B side or a combination. Or if you have the Kickstarter exclusive cards, it doesn't really matter. You're going to get your employees ready to go here at the top. You're going to get your corner stores and your factory parts. And then you're going to take a color to represent the Automa in this case I took yellow you're gonna take five discs and place them one each under um, a department store and then you're gonna place one that you can barely see on the zero track there will be three left over which you will not need for the game additionally the Automa does not start the game with a small medium and large corner store so the BGG files for this Automa comes with 21 Automa cards you're going to get 15 normal cards and you're going to get three easy cards and three hard cards. And the three easy and hard cards are just there to, to let you modify the difficulty if you need to do that. So to set up for a normal game, you're going to take the 15 standard cards, you're going to give them a shuffle, and you're going to deal out six to the Automa. So one, two, three, four, five, six. The rest can just go out of play nearby. Give this a shuffle and you're going to create an automate area where you're going to be flipping over cards. Let's say you wanted to play on easy. You would deal out four automa cards from the standard deck. You would take the three easy cards, shuffle them, take two of them, add them to the four, shuffle them, and that would be your six card automa deck for the game. Likewise, for hard, you're going to take the three hard cards, shuffle them, take two of them, and add them to the four standard cards for the game. So a game is going to play out just like a normal multiplayer game. So let's go over the different phases and how they change with the Automa. So during the prepare phase of each day, you're going to take one card from each employee deck, and you're going to take five factory part cards, and you're going to make packets just like you would in a multiplayer game. So let's move that out of the way. So I got my five employee cards here. I'm going to give those a shuffle. You're going to make a packet of three. That's employee packet one. And you're going to take the other two and that's employee packet two. Likewise with the factory parts you're going to give the top five a shuffle. You're going to take the top three. That's parts packet one. And the other two are parts packet Two. You and the Automa will take turns being the first player. There are six rounds, so you will be the first player for Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, and the Automa will be the first player for Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday. So when it is time to deal out the different packets, if you're the first player, then you get to choose first, just like in a norm normal multiplayer game. So let's say I choose one of these, one of the employees from this packet, now for the Automa, you're simply going to flip over the top card of its six card Automa deck. You're going to see at the very top here, there's two key features here that we need to talk about during this phase. At the top of each Automa card, there is a cost to discard this card and draw another one from the unused uh, Automa cards. You can do this once per game. So if you don't, if you flip this over, and you don't like what you see here, like maybe there's something that you really needed or you don't like what it's moving up, which we'll talk about here in a second, you can discard this card. It will cost resources and you have to spend them right now. So for this card, if I did not like this card, I could spend a coal from my supply or I could spend a chocolate that's in my storeroom to get rid of this. And to get rid of this, I would simply put it out of the game and I would draw a top card from the unused Automa deck. And then I would go based off what this shows. Let's say this is the card I drew. This one has a little bit more going on. It costs two coal to discard this 
or two chocolates in your storeroom. It's not a combination. You can't do a coal and a chocolate. It's either two coal or two chocolates to discard this and draw from the top of the deck. You don't know what you're getting, but let's say this was really nasty or like, or you, you were leading in first place at on uh, fresh fancies during at the very last round or something. And you, this would let them take the lead and you wouldn't want them to get the 16 vict victory points for being first at fresh fancies. You could discard this and draw blindly from the top of the unused deck. The Automa will always play six cards during the game. So if you discard this, you're going to take one from the unused Automa cards. You will note that on the easy and hard modifier cards, if you're playing on easy or hard and these cards come up, there is no cost to discard these. You cannot discard these if they come up. So just bear that in mind. Also, just keep in mind that you can only do that once per game. But going back to our initial example of the card we drew, so after you've choose, chosen to either keep the card or discard it, you're then going to look at this top part and you're going to read it from left to right. So in this case, you went first, so now the Automa gets to go back to back. So it wants factory parts packet number two. So this was employee packets one. This was employee packet two. This is parts packet one. And this is parts packet two. So it wants factory parts packet number two. So it will take this and it will simply discard it. It will not use these during the game. It's just going to prevent you from getting them. Then it gets to go again. It wants employee packet number one. Well, you already took that. It's gone. So it's going to look at the next eligible. So this one says employee packet number two. So it will take this. It has to abide by the same rules as you do as it has to take one employee packet and as well as one parts packet. For example purposes, let's say this card came up. You had just gone, so now it's the Automa's turn to go. It wants employee packet two. Okay, well that's gone. So it'll say, okay, give them factory parts packet number two. So one, two, discard that. It gets to select again reading it from left to right now it says give it factory parts one well that's not a legal uh, pick because it already has a parts so it will simply go to the next one and it will pick employees packet one leaving you with this packet to choose from when the ai is the first player it gets to choose first then you get two picks and then it will pick whatever's left over and simply discard it once again the ai never collects these it simply discards any packets that it picks up and it does not matter what department stores are showing on these cards, it's going to reference its Automa card when it's time to fulfill orders. Once you've selected your factory parts and employees, the game is going to play out just like in a normal multiplayer game. If you're the first player, you're gonna run your factory and complete any orders just like you would. And then once it's time for the Automa's turn, you're gonna look at the card that you flipped over and you're gonna look at the middle and the bottom sections because we've already used these sections. It's going to tell you if it completed any corner shop cards this turn. It will either say small, medium, or large on it, or there might be, there's a card that has multiple orders on it. If it shows this, then you simply take the top card of that deck and you score all the points on it for the AI. So in this case, it completed a medium corner shop. So we'll take the top of that deck and it's going to score 13 points. So we'll go ahead and move that on its track, and then you will keep this in the Automa's player area. Because once again, it can try to score for the most corner shop cards completed at the end of the game. The other action that it could possibly take would be to collect chocolates. And in this case, you would take these from the supply and place them in the Automa player area, and it will simply score for those at the end of the game per the normal scoring rules. But going back to our first example, after you've done this middle section, you go to the very bottom and it's going to deliver to a department store. In this case, it's going to deliver to the house of luxury and it's going to move up the track two times. So it's simply going to move one, two, up the house of luxury. Let's say it was on eight and then you pulled this card and it had to move up two. it would move up to nine and any extra movement is just lost which is the same rule for you playing in a normal multiplayer game.
And that is all the possible actions that these Automa cards could be doing. There are a couple on the harder difficulty that might fill, fulfill two orders. So this you would flip over the top uh, large card from the corner shop as well as the top small card, score those points, and put it, put it in its play area. There's also two that with these two cards, you're going to move up the tracks two times on both of the tracks showing. And on easy, it's going to score for small market, uh, small corner store cards, but there it's not going to move up any tracks on the department stores. So if you're first player, you're going to take your turn. You're going to look at the, the Automa card that you flipped over previously for that round, and then you're going to take the actions on it. If you're not the first player, then after you've selected factory and employee parts, then you're going to resolve the Automa card, and then you're going to take your turn. And this matters for department stores, because remember, if there's ever a tie for a department store, whoever's on bottom is the one that becomes that gets the first place. So you want to make sure that if it's the Automa's turn and it's first player, you're resolving its card first and fulfilling orders for it first before you're doing it. And with that, you know how to play a game of Chocolate Factory against the solo Automa named Willie. In-game scoring is just the same as in a multiplayer game. Whoever has first place is going to get 16 points on these department store tracks. If you qualify for second place, then you or the AI will collect points for the department store tracks. Whoever has the most corner store cards um, completed will get an additional 12 points. And if you or the AI is on three, four, or five of these department stores, then you're going to get six, 12, or 24 additional points. Lastly, you're going to score for any chocolates that are in your player area, and the AI is going to score for any chocolates left over in its player area. Whoever has the most points wins. And in case there's a tie, it's the last player to have gone in turn order in the last round. I will be filming a full playthrough so you can see this in action. Um, but at this point, you should be able to find a full rules as well as the cards on BGG under the Chocolate Factory BGG page. It's in the file section. I will post a link to uh, a complete list of my Automas, which will have a link in there to this specific um, Automa that you can download, print, and enjoy. If you have any questions, feel free to comment below or on the BGG page, and I hope really provides you a good challenge.